Although Ebelman had already implemented a reverse combustion method that produced a less tarred gas, there was no good engine to use this gas. It appeared only 20 years later, in 1860. A Belgian of French origin managed to build a tolerable internal combustion engine with spark ignition. Attempts to build an engine had been made before that. But before Lenore, the engines were, to put it mildly, unworkable and unfit for mass application. There were no gas-powered engines yet, steam engines were in full use. Etienne Lenore's motor followed steam engine principles, but sucked air with coal gas in the cylinders and ignited the mixture with a spark. Modern gasoline-powered vehicles work the same way. It's been 152 years, and mankind hasn't come up with anything better than this principle. The piston moves, the mixture passes in and is ignited by the spark. The motor was compact and fitted on an oak table in the workshop. The public accepted a workable Lenore engine. Technical progress was in full swing, such compact engines were needed in boats, agriculture, stationary dynamos, pumps, and other appliances. The public had not yet seen such a low noise engine, so they began to replicate it. All in all, about 500 pieces were produced. At the time when Lenore built his engine on illuminating gas from coal, steam engines had been in use for a hundred years. There were horseless carriages omnibuses with chauffeurs on behind, translated from the French as stokers, who shoveled fuel into furnaces of the steam boilers stoking them. Lenore also decided to create such an omnibus a horseless carriage. Its engine was much smaller and lighter than a steam one, which eventually superseded steam engines. By the way, Lenore also invented the round steering wheel. In 1862, Lenore built a three-wheeled, eight-seat omnibus that made it from Paris to John Ville's Les Bontes, 19 kilometers away, in three hours. This vehicle looked more like a large wooden three-wheeled cart, but it no longer needed a horse to move. Lenore himself made test rides on it in Paris outskirts. The engine didn't become popular, it still lacked efficiency and power. At that time, engineers did not understand why to make a fuss if horses were much cheaper, faster, more reliable, unpretentious, and did not require skilled service personnel. Public transport, on the other hand, adopted more powerful steam traction. At that time, illuminating gas was produced from gas coal, firewood, oil, etc. The method was not complicated, coal was put in closed flattened pipes, and a fire was burnt under them pyrolysis took place, and gas with a caloric value of about 4,500 kilocalories was produced. Semi-coke remained. Today this method is still used for making charcoal. That time, illuminating gas had been used for lighting streets with gas lanterns for more than a hundred years. Just as Lenore created his engine by studying the work of his contemporaries, Nicholas Otto studied Lenore's work, improved it, and began to replicate an improved version of Lenore's engine. Otto's engine had a 16% efficiency compared to 4.5% of Lenore's best engines and consumed five times less fuel. And in 1877, Otto patented the four-stroke engine. This was the greatest technical achievement that would become the death sentence for steam engines in the future. It had more efficiency at a much smaller size. Otto's engines instantly began to be mass-produced. About 42,000 engines, both large and small, were produced at that time. Today, four-stroke engines are still being produced all over the world. In 2014, for example, there were 1.2 billion operational engines worldwide using the cycle invented by Otto. The engine was completely ready to be powered with firewood gas. It was small and highly efficient, but a compact gasifier had not yet been invented. To put yourself in the shoes of the inventors of the time, imagine that you had to put a scaled-down version of a mini charcoal firing plant in a car. 
not an intermittent method of obtaining gas, as in the case of charcoal or illuminating gas, was required but an uninterrupted conversion of fuel into gas as in a blast furnace. Emil Dowson made the second impetus that advanced the appearance of firewood-powered vehicles after Ebelman in 1879-1883. He had studied Ebelman's works and was the first to propose power gas, i.e. gas to power engines. It was produced under the same principle as in a blast furnace but had slight differences. Coke or anthracite was put in a large tube lined from the inside. Air was fed from the bottom everything like in a blast furnace, but steam was fed also from the bottom to enrich the gas. Water displaces air nitrogen and gas becomes 50% stronger than blast furnace gas although almost three times weaker than illuminating gas. It was a half-water gas. But even though it was weaker than illuminating gas, the process was non-stop. There was no need to shovel out the semi-coke and rekindle the fire under the pipes. The gas was purified in a barrel with shoveled coke. Water was poured on top of the coke. When the output gas turned blue, it was fed to the engine. Firewood must not be thrown into the Dowson gasifier, the resulting tar would have clogged all the pipes. It was a breakthrough. Not so long ago, it was possible to get gas only from the pipe sitting in its place. Now a gasifier could be placed with an engine on a wagon, which could also be moved by the gas, if a belt was switched from a drive wheel to a moving wheel. This enabled obtaining mechanical energy at any desired place. The photo shows such a wagon with a Dowson gasifier and an 18 horsepower engine. No one even thought of trying to install a gasifier in a vehicle at the time. After Otto's discovery, everyone rushed to interbreed this engine with gasoline. It took a long time to invent a carburetor. And when the engine started running on gasoline, the automobile industry boomed. It was easier to fill a tank with gas oil than to hulk up a gasifier on a vehicle. Daimler-Benz produced small cars, while Otto considered big gas engines as the future. He remained a proponent of illuminating gas. A Swedish cartoon from those years shows the superiority of cheap diesel fuel over the Dowson gasifier. Why turn into a stoker when you can use liquid diesel at 7 cents a liter instead of a gasifier? Diesel engines and Dowson gasifiers were in operation in those days in many factories. Only very few gasifiers were installed on vehicles at that time. The first classic gasifier vehicle using wood chips and charcoal as fuel was built by French engineer Taylor in 1900. It was still a blast furnace with fuel loaded from the top and air with steam blown from under the grate. It also included two heat exchanger coolers and a scrubber to rinse gas. The firewood was mixed with charcoal so that the gas would not be too tarry. In 1905, Thornacroft built the first gasifier motorboat in England. A good firewood-powered vehicle had not appeared. World War I facilitated the process. 